everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brian's Cripple Kitchen. Those of you who know me know my favorite show is Bob's Burgers. And as a celebration for the Bob's Burgers movie, which was supposed to come out this week, thanks a lot COVID, it's now delayed until April of next year, I'm here to make a candy bacon burger. For those of you who follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you may have seen that I made candied bacon a couple weeks ago. It turned out really well. I tried both pork and turkey bacon. I know in my first episode I said I prefer turkey bacon. I'm sincerely sorry because I made pork candied bacon and oh my god, it's the best thing I've ever tasted. So that's what we're doing here today. So just to start off with the bacon, you will of course need bacon. <laughs> I've got three strips here. You'll also need some maple syrup, some brown sugar, and optional is cayenne pepper if you want to give it a little bit of a kick. So the first thing you want to do, you want to combine your ingredients, your maple syrup, your brown sugar, and your cayenne pepper. So I've got the maple syrup here and the brown sugar. I'm going to combine them together and then just a little bit of cayenne pepper. Use your brush if it sticks to the container. So before coating it on the bacon, you want to mix it together really well. The brown sugar tends to stick together and get a little lumpy. So just sort of break that up and mix it together. Oh, there's a big chunk here. Mix it all together. You want to use quite a bit of maple syrup depending on how many slices of bacon you have. As I, as I said, I have three here. Take your brush and coat your bacon. Feel free to be very liberal with this. That's why we have a lot of maple syrup. I oiled down the pan, uh, the tin foil rather, but it's gonna stick anyway. So I guess that's optional, but Usually best to oil any sort of surface when you're cooking. Now you want to take those slices of bacon and flip them over. Feel free to use like a spatula or something like that for this, but we've got a fork, so that's what I'm going to use. Okay, that is flipped. Go back to coating your bacon. All right, now there's lots left, but what we're gonna do, this is going to go in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. After those 20 minutes, you're going to coat both sides again and then throw it back in the oven for another five. So let's go to the kitchen. Okay, so I've got that bacon in the oven for 20 minutes. When that 20 minutes are over, I'm going to take them out, uh, coat them on one side, flip them, coat them again on the other side, and pop them back in for another five. Uh, you can leave it in longer if you like. It really just depends on how crispy you like your bacon. And when that's over, we'll let them cool, and then we'll start preparing our burger. Okay, so I've taken the bacon out of the oven at 20 minutes. I'm going to recoat them with our mixture of maple syrup, brown sugar, and cayenne pepper. Take your fork and flip them. Then you want to recoat them again. And now they're pretty crispy already. So I'm going to pop them back in the oven, but only for three more minutes. Now when that's done, we're going to take them out of the oven and set them aside and then we'll start on our burger. So I've taken the bacon out of the oven and set it aside to cool and now it's time to start on our burger. Uh, first thing you'll need, of course, is a burger patty. Uh, I picked up some frozen burger patties, which I know is sacrilegious. A lot of people have yelled at me over the last few days over that. Uh, some people prefer to, to uh, make their own with ground beef. Uh, this is all about making things easier, so personally I think Grabbing a frozen patty and just letting it thaw is the way to go. So I threw it in the microwave for uh, two and a half minutes just to thaw a little bit. You can also leave it, set it aside in the sink to thaw depending on how much time you have. 
Uh, of course, we've got a burger bun. I've got some bacon and maple barbecue sauce to top the whole thing. You can use any kind of sauce you like, any kind of barbecue sauce, ketchup, uh, whatever you feel up to. But uh, I grabbed that bacon and maple barbecue sauce to go along with the bacon flavor. And we've also got some old cheddar. Thank you to Charlene on Twitter for the suggestion. Um, myself, I'm lactose intolerant and uh, the harder the cheese, the better on me. So uh, old cheddar, uh, I've been using it for years on sandwiches, so that really is the way to go. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let this uh, pan uh, cool a little bit and then we'll get going on our burger. It's now time to get our burger going. So I've got the burner on and the first thing you want to do is to grease your pan. Usually I use a spray, but uh, today I'm using butter. There's a reason for that and I'll show you in a second. So you put a little bit in the pan and let that melt just a little bit. And use your spatula to move the butter around or just pick it up and let it dance in the pan. So that is nicely coated. And so I've turned the pan down just a little. So the reason we use butter is first I'm going to toast my buns. <laughs> wouldn't really work with oil, you'd kind of get that oil taste, and I've done that before, it doesn't really work. So you just want to leave them in the pan, checking them periodically, and once they st start to brown to your liking, you take them out. Okay, so the buns have been browned. Ooh, careful, they're very hot. That's kind of what you want them to look like. The pan is already hot, and you want to turn it down to about five or so, then medium. And now it's time to take your <laughs> frozen burger patty <laughs> and put it in the frying pan. That sizzle will slow down here in a second. Now being a wheelchair user, you're usually quite low to the ground. You want to leave it on a low heat, or at least medium, because the splatter can be quite dangerous. Uh, you may honestly want to invest in some goggles for this sort of thing, if you plan on doing this a lot. So you want to leave that in the pan for a few minutes, and then uh, check it periodically, and once it reaches the color and consistency that you like, you can flip it. Uh, the good thing about beef is it doesn't have to be well done. Uh, personally, I like my beef well done. <laughs> Again, I know that's sacrilegious. I'm often reminded of the episode of King of the Hill when Bobby asks his dad, well, what happens if someone wants their steak well done? Well, son, then we kindly but firmly ask them to leave. So the patty has been flipped, so you, again, you want to leave that for a few more minutes, just checking it periodically. Now, you can use a meat thermometer to check the temperature on your burger, uh, but again, it's all about preference. Uh, it depends on how you like your meat. Okay, giddy. Okay, so the burger's almost done. So while it's in the pan, you want to take your old cheddar or any kind of cheese that you have and place it on the patty. It lets it melt a little bit. In a few seconds, I'm going to turn off the burner. So now we're going to take all our ingredients to the dining room table where we first started, and we're going to assemble our burger. Okay, so I have all my ingredients here for my candied bacon burger. Uh, as I said, you can add any sort of sauce you like. You can add lettuce, but really, who wants vegetables on this sort of thing? We'll just start assembling your burger, placing all the bacon on top. I could eat this bacon every single day. <laughs> all right, and then finally, top it off with your barbecue sauce. And finally, the top button. And here we have the candy bacon burger. Oh, I tell you, it smells delicious. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. If you have a suggestion as to what you'd like to see next, you can reach out to me on Instagram and Twitter at Cripple Kitchen. And if you've made one of my uh, concoctions yourself, don't forget to send it along to be featured on a future episode.
Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.